I'm Deanna Belmonte. Hi, I'm Alan Ross. Welcome to Saturday Night Fighting. We're going to be bringing you kickboxing, Muay Thai style fighting, and even ultimate style fighting. Stuff you can't even get on pay-per-view. Along with some self-defense, product testing, and fitness tips. So stand by. Let's have a good night. Hello and welcome to Alan Ross's Saturday Night Fighting. I'm Steve Shemansky and tonight we're going to be doing something a little different from the kickboxing and ultimate style fighting you've seen in the past. Tonight we're going to bring you the United, 1998 United States Men's and Women's National Judo Championship. And we are fortunate enough to have in studio to assist us with tonight's show two former Olympians on my left. Erwin Cohn, 1972 Olympian, and to my right, his brother Steve Cohn from 1988. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Steve. It's good to be here, Steve. Great. So tonight we're going to be seeing the National Judo Championships. What, uh, what are some of the things we can look for? <clears throat> well, we're in for a treat tonight because we have some of our top, top uh, world athletes competing in this championship. We have uh, Colleen Rosensteel, who's been a two-time Olympian. We have Todd Bray, who just moved up a division, who was an international uh, place winner. We have quite a few uh, top players, so it'll be interesting to watch. And some of the some of the techniques, no striking, all throws and joint locks and grappling. Well, there's kind of thing. there's four ways to win. One is to throw your opponent flat on his back with control and force for a full point. And the other three are grappling, hold downs for 25 seconds, uh, chokes till they submit or till they. Uh, render unconscious or uh, arm locks again till they submit or till the arm is broken. But uh, but I'll tell you something, Steve. You're also going to see some 13 and 14 year olds in uh, in the medal, the bronze medal matches that uh, are going to be the future of our sport in 2004 and 2008 Olympics. And that's so great. it's going to be uh, quite exciting. Absolutely. So let's head down down to the mat and check out some of the judo action. Okay, we're going down to the mat, and it looks like we have Deborah McDermott against Christina Yanestos. Yanestos. Yeah. And wh what do you know about these two fighters? Well, Christina's from uh, Hialeah, Florida. She trains under uh, her coaches, Avilio Garcia, one of our top junior coaches. Christina's 15 years old, and she's a real dominant player. Is she in the USA gi there, or the plain she, She's on the right. She's white. She has the white sash she around her. She has the white belt. sash okay. on. And you're going to see her coming up with her right hand yeah, she's constantly. Sure. Now here, uh, Deborah's going for an arm lock, and it's not, it didn't work. Uh, I had Christina in Venezuela at the Junior Pan Ams, and if she, took, uh, she took third place, a bronze medal in the 19 and under division, so she's very strong. Very competitive. What about yes. anything about Deborah that we might look for? Well, well, Deborah's a, a newcomer. She's from uh, uh, Anchorage, Ooh. Alaska. Yeah. She, almost, she almost threw it with a sacrifice. Remember, you don't get a score if you land on your stomach. You have to throw your opponent on, on their side, on their, uh, on their butt, or on fully on their back to get any kind of score. See, the gripping is a big part of judo. You'll see that the fighting for the grip is really important. All right, All right now, <clears throat> now they're going to give Red, uh, Deborah, uh, non-combativity, or grab, grabbing the pant leg. You can't grab the pant leg to defend your opponent. You, but you can grab you, it if you're in, in, if you're in an offensive mode and you're trying to score. And that's all up to the discretion of the judge exactly. if you're offense or defense. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's there's three there's three judges out there, so it's always uh, uh, majority rules. So if if two of the judges feel that she was in violation, she'll get a penalty. Now, judo is the rules of judo are are, are made so you are constantly offensive. If you are not in offensive mode, you are going to be getting a penalty. If you don't attack within 15 seconds, you get a penalty. If you make what they call a false attack, an attack does th that does not off-balance your opponent, you're going to get a penalty. And so they'll actually deduct points from your score? Well, what they do is they give a point to your, to to your, your opponent. opponent. <clears throat> the point system, are, are, are the, the, there are four points you can get. One is an eighth of a point they call a coca. That's when you throw someone on your butt or you get the penalty of a shido. Okay, that is, that is at like an eighth of a point. Then there's a quarter of a point, which is a yuko. That is when you throw someone on their side. That equivalent of a penalty is, oh, there's a nice sacrifice, knockdown. That should be a yuko call. 
Now oh, she she's has, got her she in a pin. Her hold down. She has her in a hold down. Now and she holds her uh, for 30 seconds in this tournament. Since then, the rules have changed to 25 20. seconds. But now she's holding Christine. And she doesn't have to hold her completely flat. No, she just no. has to. No. She has, has to have to. control. All right, now Whoa. she turns on her she stomach, so it's out. It's broken. Oh, now no, she's she got an arm bar. But she doesn't have control of the body, so Christine she still got out. Oh, she's pretty good for a young girl. And there, and of course, is no striking involved in these. No kicking, striking, no kicking. Knees, elbows, mm, headbutts. But, but there are foot sweeps, and sometimes mm. a foot sweep looks now, like a kick. The, the Deborah just scored a Yuko, mm -hmm. which is a quarter of a point uh, for the pin. Now the next point you can get is a half a point. Mm -hmm. That's by throwing uh, your opponent on, on their back without force. Now she's going into groundwork, what we call newaza, which is groundwork. Now Christina's clearly behind, and I know her coach is telling her to, to really pick up the action. And obviously that the red square is, is your, if you fall into the red, they restart you? or you No, outside no, of the red. red. The red is, is a warning area that warns you where you're at. Oh. You see, she keeps knocking her down on her knee, and that's, that's not a score. You have to get her on her side or on her back or on her butt to get any kind of score. And then the ref will restart. Yes. Restart, yes. And the clot stops every time every the ref time gets. Restart. So you fight yes. a full four minutes. Oh, you that's, see? that was an old Chigari, an inside reap into a pin. And uh, she doesn't quite hold it, but she got a score for that old Chigari. Looks like she's going for another arm. Another, for another arm lock. Just can't seem to turn her. No. If she could get her legs and, up around and that if, body. If there's no progress in five to ten seconds, the referee will call Mate and break it and stand it up. You have to make progress on the ground. Otherwise, they'll stand you right up. If you're making progress, they could leave you down there as much as 30, 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. So there is no stall technique to no. kind of get your feel of what no. the opponent's going to make a mistake. No. So you can Our, Well, th there is a stall technique, but it's got to be, you have to be very experienced mm -hmm. to be able to do it. You have to be able to stall and make progress. Now in judo, when you sacrifice yourself on your back to throw someone, the score is against you, the person that sacrifices themselves on their back. All right, they're giving, they're giving, uh, they're giving Deborah a uh, overly defensive posture. So now she has two penalties. Penalties are cumulative. All right, so it's it's equal to a fourth of a point. Uh, another penalty. See, you have to be aggressive and offensive all the time. Now she's now she's losing. Deborah's losing by half a point. Oh, there it is. Now she sacrificed. That was a sacrifice. That was a sacrifice. But she sacrificed herself on her back. So she gets a deduction. She, she should get a point against her. I'm learning along with all you out uh, there. Uh, uh, it's. <laughs> well, yeah, right. that, that was it. And that'll Cr end the four minute Yes, period. and Christina won. And that's a very big win for her taking third place in our, in our uh, national championships because that allows her to uh, be in a situation where she can go and get funded places. Okay, he here's our championship match mm. between Lilico Gasawara and Salida Schultz. Uh, Lilico took, took a bronze medal in the 90, uh, 95 World Championships and a silver in the 93 World Championships. Salida is, is a very strong player. He's placed in European events this past, this past two years. So this is a great match. This is a gold medal match this in the 63 yes. kilogram yes. division. A Lilico yes. is in the red and Salida is in the right. Salida is on the ground with her face down right now. Both of these girls were trained from the same club, from the same coach. Their coach is Lilico's father, Mr. Ogasawara. Is, is that right? Yes. So they're probably very familiar they're, with each other's yeah. moves and yes. probably have sparred many times. Yes. These two are going to be fighting to see who goes to Sydney is in 2000. Right? Now, in the past few years, Lilico has not won as much, and Salida is starting to win internationally now. So it's a, it, it's a good fight. Salida has seemed to be stronger. Well, well they, they used to be in different divisions, but International Judo Federation changed the divisions. So now they're in the same division. So this is like the first time they're fighting. They uh, reclassified yeah. the weights. Yes. Uh, 
to add, to add another Look weight. Look at Salida be dominant with the grip. There it is. There it is. She There's just scored a Yuko. With the Harai Goshi, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like an outside reaping hip throw. Now she's got the pin. Salida's very strong. Very, very strong. She's just holding her throne. She's holding her, and that's... Uh, and that's for 20, 30 seconds, 30? 25 now, 30. Yes, yes. correct. The now she's got her head, she's got more control. Mm -hmm. and, and She lost her head, but you can see how strong she is. Lilico can't move. This is a great win for Salida. She just had her stop. She couldn't defend could, Yeah, couldn't move. Maybe this girl's going to be fighting all the way up to the Olympic Games. Probably will see each other many times. Yes. Now, is there a choking allowed in this? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Said that? yes. yes. And That's they a build model for Salida. So Salida, <coughs> Salida, Salida won the gold. Yes, Salida so wins Salida's the gold. our national champion. <coughs> for the 63, women's 63, women's 63, 63 kilos. kilos. Okay, great. Now we're going to move ahead to the men's 81 kilos. In the bronze matches. The bronze match. We have Tony Dangerfield from Illinois. Oh, oh actually, I think we're going to go to Charles first. Charles oh, Graves. Oh, we sure are. Okay. Charles Graves and Reno Reeser. Reno trains at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. He's originally from Texas, but he's a good, good upcoming player. And Charles is from Oklahoma, trains under Pat Burris, a two-time Olympian. Should be an exciting match. I see the grab. Everybody goes straight yes. to the, the lapel, trying to gather some kind of yeah, control. Yeah, well, trying to, you know, get an attack off the grip and get a good, solid grip. Grip fighting is probably 60% of our sport. You have to have oh, control. Oh, there's an old Chigari, an inside reaping throw. But you see he turned out of it. He landed on his stomach, so he didn't get a score. The judge on the side is going to signal with his hand whether the throw is in or out. And that's when you see him sticking his hand out. If it's not, if it's out, he will wave his hand. And there are, what, three judges, two judges? There's two judges and, and one referee. And you both have to score a point for it to be a point, or just one? Uh, well, what it is is that if the referee calls, calls a score, the judge has the option to disagree with him, and he will disagree by signaling another score or waving it off totally. If both judges disagree, he's got to change the score. See, Charles is overly defensive, and if he, and he just made an attack, so that, pro ooh, that, oh, probably, that, the foot that, that probably saved him from getting a penalty. Uh, no, oh, no, it didn't. Give it to no, it didn't. No, it didn't. They're giving him a stalling, non-combat activity. That's a Shido, so it equals a Coca to, uh, to, Reno. to Reno. So Reno's ahead by a Coca, which is an eighth of a point. Reno's favorite throw is a Uchimata, which is an inside uh, lifting hip throw. Oh, there's an Ochigari grabbing the leg. Nice attack. Yes, that's a Yuko. That's a quarter of a point. a Yuko. Yes. Now remember, points are not accumulative. Only, only half points are. Two halves make a whole. Now, I notice his feet crossed down there. That's obviously a defensive position. What's the... It's, uh, it's, it's called a scissor. When you scissor the leg, to, to, to score on a, on a hold down, you have to be free and clear of your opponent's legs. So if, if you scissor any part of your opponent's body, it's, it's not a hold down. So that's, that's a, a very popular defensive move. Once you go down on your back, you scissors up your opponent's body or legs and you wait for the referee to, uh, to break you and stand you up. And we have three of our top officials from the United States on the mat, uh, which makes uh, a, a, lot, a lot better for our national championships, mm -hmm. for our medal rounds. Yeah, they're, they're, all three of them are A referees, which means they could referee in, in the World Championships and the Olympic Games. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Now, do the men, the men go five minutes? Men yes. go five, five minutes. Right, see the way he grabs them and pulls them around? Oh, Ooh, good there's attack. a nice. score. That's there's a drop a Saonagi off the cross lapel grip. Now he's going into Sankaku. Or he's going to try to roll him on his back and scissors his head mm -hmm. and, and his arm it. together. There it is. There you it see, is. he's got a tight. Choke there. Well, That's he, a choke. It or is a choke, but he's going, up, he's going for the hold he's down. He's going for the hold down he, first. He's going to try to control the arm. He's going to tie the arm up. He key locks the arm and he turns up. No, he turns up. There's, there's the osicomi, which means a pin is called yeah. and the clock is started. That's a nice move. It's so he secured the leg to keep him from mm -hmm. yeah, no, getting he's got any a, leverage. Yes. It's also a choke, too. If, if he, he needs to be tighter with his legs for, it to, for the choke to work. Mm -hmm. And he also needs to flex his leg 
You see his leg is straight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He held him for 30 seconds, which is a full point. The match is over. That was a nice move. Okay, so not only on a pin do you get a point, that can end your match right yeah, there, right. just as in uh, Olympic uh, Greco-Roman right. wrestling, a pin can end your exactly. match. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Arena is, is an up-and-coming player that has a good chance to make our Olympic team. Very hard worker. He did that in just under four minutes. Yes. That was some good work. Now yeah. our next match, we're going to see Tony Dangerfield from Chicago Gets and Charles back. Lee from San Jose. There are two places in the United States that you can train <clears throat> after high school that have teams. One is the Olympic Training Center mm -hmm. uh, that, that allows you to go to college there and, and, and live at the training center and live for free and get in-state tuition. And the other is San Jose. Uh, they have a judo team. And uh, so though, if you're from San Jose, you're, you're, you're known to be a fairly strong player. So if you really want to get serious about this, you really need to... Well, the, 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 these, these are some options. I yeah. mean, there are, there are obviously other players from around the country that have, you know, that can travel around the world also, you know, don't have to be there. But, <clears throat> yes, that, that, that is a definite, a, a good option. Mm -hmm. Now, who would be in the red here? Would that be Tony or, or yeah. Charles? Uh, Tony's, Tony's, in Tony's, Tony's in the red. In the red. Charles is in the white sash. These players are both very comparable in ability, so it's going to be a close match. You probably won't see too many knockdowns or too many points. Got to readjust the gear. All that grabbing and twisting. Well, it makes a difference. You need you need to you know be able to pull the gear, and if your opponent's able to slip out of the gear, you know when you grab them, you know it's hard to throw them. Mm -hmm. the, the, these are the very best referees in the world refereeing now. They're watching every little little aspect of the match. They're not going to let anyone gain an advantage like that. Yeah, right to the lapel. You see, Tony's a very aggressive player. You'll see he'll attack, he'll attack with, uh, with sacrifices and stomach throws. Right, right now he's pr trying to push him out to get a, to get a violation against, against his opponent. The guy, the guy made an attack near the edge of the mat. You cannot stay in the red zone for five seconds without attacking. That's a penalty. And if you step out of bounds without, without having to avoid a throw, if you just step out on your own, that's a penalty also. So you're going to see a lot of action, a lot of, a lot of attacks, but because they're so close in ability, you're not going to see a lot of throws. Looks like he was trying to get, a, get an arm there, too. And the Tony. Well, to, to catch an when you're on the ground to catch an arm, it only takes a matter of a second. And then, then once you have it, you have it. But to hold someone down for 25, 30 seconds is hard. So that's why when they get get to the mat, usually you see them go for the arm lock. Mm -hmm. Because boom, in a matter of a second, it's over. Quite excruciating pain. Okay, he just, Charles, Charles just got his stalling. Oh, a nice leg pick. Nice try. Now Tony's going to go in for some Niwaza. Now he's looking for oh, a Oh, he's looking for Sankaku. the Sankaku. Ooh. Almost has it. Almost oh, has look, it. he's got the gi, yeah. helping he, trap the arm. Yes, so he, has the, he has the arm tied up. A, it's called a... Lock, where you tie up the arm with your opponent's There he feet. goes. Now if he could sit up, yeah. he's got to sit up. He, he's got to be turned toward the net. There it is. There's the osicomi, which means the pin has started. Now, and if again, he, they, they try to secure the leg. Well, what they're, they're trying to do is keep him from bridging. Yeah, bridging and turning. You see, if, 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 if he can hold on to that leg and keep him uh, immobile, now he's not moving. There he's trying to lock his legs, but he just can't get it. He's yeah, so he gone. lost it. He, he lost, lost it. his legs. He lost it. He got that's, a half a point. That's a half a point. Quite this winded. That that looks tiring. Kind of tiring. Just watching him roll around like that. Mm. Mm. That's why you have to be in excellent condition. I can see. That's. Uh, that means he was within five seconds of having the match end with him winning. Is that right? Now, yeah. what is that worth? A half? Or? It's worth a half a point. Twenty-five seconds at this time. Twenty-five seconds was a half point. 30 seconds is a full point.
Now, are Olympic rules going to stand with the 25? Or yes. Yes. 25. What they did was they was they did statistics for four years, and the amount of uh, matches that that ended between 25 seconds and 30 seconds were so minimal mm -hmm. that that they just they made it 25 it. seconds. Looks like we're about ready to jump right into the gold medal match between uh, Todd, Todd Bray and Randy Immamore. Right, absolutely. Uh, Todd Bray is a good top player. He's really uh, coming on. He's a, he was a, a past 73 kilo uh, athlete. And uh, in the United States, uh, our 73 kilo number one athlete is Jimmy Pedro, and he's the best player in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order for Todd to have a chance to make the Olympic team, he had to move up a division. Had to beef, yeah. so, so this is his free. He has never won the Nationals before. He's been in the Nationals. He's fought in the Nationals maybe six, seven times. And this is his first real good chance to win the Nationals. But, but he, Todd is like 28, 29 years old. He's a, he's a seasoned veteran, and this is, uh, this is his last hurrah. Uh, he's shooting for 2,000. Todd is on the left in the red. Now, uh, in the red. Now, Rodney is a very good technician. Uses his feet well. And he has excellent hip throws. So you're going to see him step in for Uchimata right there. Todd is both strong standing and on the ground. Now, if you go he, for a throw and there's nothing there where he just kind of had to... If, if he does not off-balance his opponent, they're going to give him a violation for will. a false attack. You'll see, oh, and I saw what you got right. You'll see Todd when he goes into groundwork that he's going to go in with a little more uh, experience and knowledge than what we've seen before. He's very good on the ground. He'll keep coming, too. He's an aggressive offensive player. Now is uh, now that he's left, is Jimmy Pedro obviously still in the 73 kilogram class yes. and dominating? Yes, Jimmy's number one in the world at 73 kilos. So you know, you, well, these past couple of years we're seeing a lot of old 73 players move up or down, you know, to get away from Jimmy to get a chance to, oh, to make nice an Olympic team. Attack. That's a sign you see how bad. how uh, Rodney keeps trying to move out of bounds when they get the. On the ground, very cautious on the ground mm -hmm. with Todd. Well, Rodney's not a very strong a mat man. His his forte is all standing. <clears throat> so so once he goes to his knees, he's looking for the for the red and for the uh, out of bounds line. Oh, good nice sweet sweet. Now is it kind of like uh, oh, oh good Coso. Soto. Any other sport where you're better off being more balanced, good on the ground and standing up, or is there an advantage to be dominant on your feet? Or yeah. dominant on the ground. You're best if you have no weaknesses. You want yeah. to be able to win everywhere. Looks like Todd's going to look for a fireman's all. Okay, he changes grip. Todd has a real nice Tayatoshi, which is a body drop where you step in front right of your there. like that. There it is. There. Now he's going into the side. Now he'll go into the juji, which is an arm bar, and he'll try to move in. There he goes. See the way he has there the he arm. Goes. You see like how tight snake. he is? Yeah. Now he's going to move. Now he's, he's moving in toward the mat. Yeah. So he hasn't. There now he goes. Now he turns him out of his back. There he goes. Now he'll work the arm. He'll I, take I his don't, time. I don't think that Rodney's going to be able to avoid getting uh, arm up. He's trying. Mm -hmm. He's trying. But now Todd could sit up on him and get a pin. There's see, the pin. Now, that, now there's the else coming. Now see. Rodney has to make a move. Trying to get the legs around the head. He's going to try and bridge and turn. Once he bridges and turns, it, he'll, Todd will take the arm. Actually, Todd should have to have his right. front leg back. Yeah. Right there. Ooh, almost. And why would that be? There we uh, go, because it, it, it's just, I think that was a mistake in the call by the referee. He's going to roll him back again. over no, again. He'll work, right it again. It, yeah. work it again. Yeah. Work it again. See, now, he's now, now, he's going, now, see? Now, now he's sitting now, up, now he's sitting up into all that, 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 that's, that That's a pin. The way he did it before, I think the referee made a mistake. You see the way Rodney's protecting his arm? Yes. You see, if arm. Rodney goes to turn, if he goes to turn out of the pin, Todd's going to get the he's arm. He's going to have to. He's going to have to turn. He doesn't, he's going to lose the match. So See, he's in a catch-22 right He's in a catch-22. And look how t Todd's weight is down pretty yeah. good. It's, it's hard to get on him. He's not, Rodney's not going anywhere. And Todd's got his arm, see, he's got his belt locked yep, around his legs. There it is. That was a great move. That was nice. Yeah. Very nice. You can see when someone is, is uh, efficient Camera. on the mat, the difference it is. How he knows where he is on the mat and how he moves himself in so his opponent won't roll out of bounds. Because if he is in the middle of a mat move and his opponent moves out of bounds, you know, if you're both out of bounds, they're going to call a break. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> and bow in, bow out, yeah. I should say. We always, we always bow in and bow out. That's tradition. Stadia has a great chance to make the 2000 Olympics. So we're getting kind of a preview of things to come in the, who's, in the who's, future. Who's so going to represent the U.S.? And you see Jimmy Pedro, of course, one of our key players coming up, and or been there, I guess. And you, uh, later on, you're going to see another one, Brian Olson. He took third in the '97 World Championships. So we have uh, we have some excellent uh, matches coming up. Well, the first five were exciting. Very exciting. Very yes. exciting. Something new for all our viewers mm -hmm. out there who haven't quite seen probably saw much so, judo. Saw some young kids coming up. Saw some seasoned veterans. Saw some great groundwork. Very exciting. Very exciting. Let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, some of the things that you guys have done in the world of judo. Uh, I know, Erwin, you were in the 72 Olympics and the uh, 92 Olympic coach. Yeah, I also fought in five world championships, and I was a Pan American silver medalist and uh, eight-time national champion. So, yeah, you know, well, that was back in the 70s, though. So, back in you know, the day. Back in, in the old days. And, and your you brother know. Steve, also uh, 88 Olympian. Yeah, but I, I had a career in the 70s, too. I, I, had a, I took a sabbatical, sort yeah. of. Uh, Is that he, right? He, he retired for seven years. Then came back, and the first year came back, he won the nationals. They won the nationals every year after that till the '88 Olympics. So he's the Michael Jordan of judo. <laughs> 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 Retire, come back, win the championship. What could be better? Uh, the only difference is the size of our house. I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and our bank account. <laughs> <laughs> A little uh, bit of more endorsement yeah. money yeah. coming his way. Um, also, we got uh, you're the world coach in. The I was the 97 world coach. I'll be the 99 world team coach and the 99 Pan American game coach. That's great. And uh, soon to be uh, voted on is the uh, 2000 Olympic uh, coaching staff, and I am up for that also. Oh, wow, what an honor. Actually, what this an... month. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. And uh, we put a lot of hard work into it. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to produce a real good team and win some medals. Yeah, that would be great. So... You see him on TV out there in the Olympics. You saw him here on Saturday Night Fighting <laughs> first. And uh, coming up, we're going to go into uh, the 70 kilogram women's and uh, the 90 kilogram men's tournament. Anything different as we move up in weights that we look for compared to the smaller players? Or well, I'll tell you what we're going to see. We're going to see in the 90 kilo men a, a top, top U.S. athlete that is just moved up a level, uh, and he took third in the world championships this year. And he's a really, really good player, Brian Olson. Brian Olson. And we have high hopes for him. And, uh, and he's what, out of Colorado? Uh, he's out of, out of Colorado Springs, originally from uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is, he, we have high hopes for Brian, very high hopes. So hopefully we'll be seeing him in Sydney. Oh, we'll see him in Sydney oh, for sure, but I, hopefully we see him on the medal stand. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Hopefully we see a lot of you USA know, in the medal yes. stand. Yes. Up, up until this year, Brian has been really close to meddling internationally and hasn't really come through. And uh, this year, this year, he, all of a sudden, he really you know, stepped out of his, uh, out of his mold, and he, uh, he's just a new person. And he took third in the world. He took four medals in Europe, and he's doing great. That's and you'll, you'll see the quality of player he is when you watch him play. Uh, you, you'll also see Sanguario Hernandez. She's a 15-year-old girl out of uh, Los Angeles, California. And uh, she, I had her in uh, Venezuela at the Junior Pan Ams, and she's an up-and-comer, too. She, has, uh, she plays a lot like Christina. She keeps coming, and uh, she's very offensive. And I think you're going to see her, maybe not 2000, but 2004, 2008, you'll see her. So yeah, hopefully on the medal stand. So the big previews. We got, we got previews oh, here of we everything. Go. And look, oh. we're already back to the mat. Okay, we're on... Uh, uh, Sanguario is, is red. She's, uh, again, she's a 15-year-old girl out of uh, L.A., and she's a, she's a tough kid. And she'll be fighting Jill Collins from uh, Napa. Yeah. We just, I just had both of these girls in a camp in Colorado Springs not too long ago. So they got... A little familiar with each other. Uh. But this was well after this competition. Oh, she's got her down. Okay, but you see how she scissors the legs? Mm -hmm. you, you, can't. you have to get your leg out in order for it to be called a, a pinch. As long as you have the leg scissors, it's nothing. The referee will break it. 
Terry Bell, the referee called Mate. We'll also see our top female referee, Terry Takamori, refereeing this match, who's a, who was a past a national champion. See the way she comes up over the top? Very powerful. Great. Oh, Whoa. nice Ochigari. For Wazari, a half a point. Now, no matter how many quarter points Yuko's or Coca's. eighth of a point, Coca's that Jill gets, it cannot make up to the Wazari. Is that right? Yes. So you can't add up to the... No, you can only... You know, you, it's now cumulative. If I have one Yuko, and that's a quarter of a point, and you have ten Coca's, mm -hmm. The one you go wins. It's it's the quality of the score, not the quantity of the score. They're looking okay. to change that. Oh, there she goes, Yochi again. Oh, very strong player, especially for 15 years old. Uh, she wrapped the legs. She wrapped the legs right away. Yeah. 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 See, I'm learning, yeah. fellas, as yeah. we go along. I'll have this down pat. Well, you'll see before she goes to her back, she's going to be prepared to wrap her legs. And there's a nice view of uh, the equipment we have. Yeah, there we go. Nice protective mats used <laughs> in uh, the tournament. Watch Sangurio. Even though she's ahead by a half a point, she's still offensive and still trying to score the other half. Being very aggressive. Well, you can't stall in judo. Right. You can only stall being aggressive. Right. You, you, and you can't lose your momentum. Once you lose your momentum, you know, then, then you're done. Oh, she goes for so still, still attacking. Ahead by a half a point and still attacking. That's great. Part of the champion. I don't know how old this girl Jill is. Do you know? I have, I have no idea. But I think she's rather young too. I think she's 17 or 18 years old. There goes the oh, car, huh? what they call a coca? You see, that's a, a, a quarter of an eighth of a point because she landed on her butt. Even though she rolled to her back afterwards, the impact was on her butt. On her butt. Now you talk about stalling, because women at the upper level, if they got tired, they would fix their hair. Uh, you're only allowed to fix your hair three times, and then you get a violation. Is that right? That is right. They think of everything. Well. <laughs> How many times can you fix the gear? Is that unlimited? That's unlimited. However, if it's, they will make sure you fix it tight each time. Or, or they'll make. If you're fixing it because you're tired, they won't let you fix it. And they'll make you fight. Because right? a lot of times you'll see you'll see a player undo loosen up a belt or undo a gi uh, lapel on purpose so on purpose to get a get a couple second break. If a referee sees it, they'll they'll make them fight. So there's no real time limit to how long you have to fix your belt. I mean, it, it's it's within reason, but I mean you can take. You can relax and take, you know, 30, 40, 50 seconds if you need to. And catch a second wind. Right, and get your breath. So, so a good referee would be, would be on to that. Looks like uh, the only disadvantage, oh. too, is if you're losing, your opponent gets that wind, too. Well, well you have to look at momentums when you're fighting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to also look at what kind of athlete you are. See, she has her hands up. She's yeah. ready to grip fight, always. They're always breaking grips. Now she's controlling oh, the sleeve and the lapel. Oh, for the Now, when they're on their back, can you mount for and roll them into a choke that way? Yes, choke you can. But, but, you know, you... It, oh, it's, it's a type of thing where if you have very good groundwork, like what we saw Todd mm -hmm. last time, Todd could start when someone's flat and make something happen. Not everyone could do that. Uh, most people have to go into mat work through transition, where when they knock someone down, they go right into it, and that's where the opening comes. So if you're behind in a match, you're not going to take the time it takes to do that and waste the time. To set up the show. To set up. Where there she goes, right? We talked about it. Right. There she goes. Whereas <laughs> if, if you are ahead, you want to take that time, because you want to take time off the clock. Mm -hmm. That's why you saw Jill not go into it and uh, Sangrario go into it. She does. She comes in every time, palms up. That's the standard practice. Oh. Yeah, you, you want to have your palms up so you can block 
it, it's not uncommon for people to do a double leg, you know, and, and surprise you. So you want your hands in front of you to block any kind of uh, uh, lunge into you. Ooh. See, <coughs> she's ahead and she's still still aggressive, always attacking. Readjust. Match is over. Mimi wins. That was great. That was a good match. Well, now we're going to the championship match with mm -hmm. Sandy Bacher and Amy Wilson. Sandy Bacher is uh, an Olympian and an international champion. She's also uh, ranked, I think, in the top five in the wrestlers in the world. Wrestling. Yes, took, women she wrestling. She took a silver medal. She took a silver medal in, in the, the Women's World, world Wrestling Championship. She's really tough on the ground. Very, very strong. And she's real aggressive, too. Her standing techniques are not as strong, but uh, she can get you down. Uh, now, what kind of, obviously, the judo background benefited <coughs> her going into the Oh, absolutely. Wrestling. Well, absolutely. women's wrestling is relatively new mm -hmm. as you started, so you'll, you, you'll see a lot of the judo, judo players go into, into women's wrestling so they could, you know, make a team or be ranked by USA Wrestling. And, and if you're ranked in the top three at USA Wrestling, you get a stipend. So, you know, a, lo a lot of these women's judo players are, are wrestling for the stipend. I think it's like $1,200 a month. Oh, is that right? There, yeah. Sandy is, is on the left, now she's yeah. on the right. Sandy's in red, yeah. and Amy's in white. There she goes, Sayanagi. Now, she, now, you, now, what Sandy does is, oh, Sandy will roll you. Watch her get in there, and she'll, no. Oh. She likes to get behind you and just roll you over and then work into a pin that way. Wow, a very aggressive yeah. start. Amy's yes. a tough kid, too. She'll, she'll come after Sandy. Sandy does a drop Ouchigari. Oh, yeah. A drop throw. Ouchigari. And a Sanagi. There's a drop Ouchigari. There it is. Now she goes into the hold down. And yeah, and, and her hold downs her, her are very workers. strong. You see how her head is up and her hips are down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's very strong. That's what you look for for a leverage position. Oh yes, absolutely. For control. I mean, she, 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 you can see what you can see the control she has. Doesn't even look like she's exerting no. much effort. She's no, so calm. Right. Well, well, she she's at a different level than Amy is. I mean, I mean, she's she's an international see how she's, athlete. She's switching her legs mm -hmm. so her legs can't get hooked because mm -hmm. if, if she her legs get scissored, uh, the pin is uh, yeah. uh, is broken. And and don't, and Amy's never competed outside of this country. Uh, Sandy has won Austria, has placed in Germany. Which are B, A, and B level tournaments in Europe. You know, he has uh, took fifth in the worlds. So she's S Sandy's an accomplished yeah. judo athlete, definitely. She, she's she's at a different level than Amy. She comes out in, in a little over what a minute and thirteen seconds. No, it's Christoph Leninger fighting. Christoph. Christoph is fighting. Uh, Willie Spears. Willie Spears from Atlanta. Christoph is another seasoned veteran. Been around a long time. Very cagey. Christoph is on the left in red. And people may have seen him in uh, some of the mixed martial arts yes. type tournaments. He's yes. Like, I've seen him on. Oh, there's a Ypon Sanagi to a leg grab. He gets a Yuko for that. That's a quarter of a point. Now, you see how he's got the leg hooked? Mm -hmm. Christoph's very strong on the ground. He's very savvy on the ground, too. He knows how to play uh, uh, both from underneath and on top. So he got points for the roll and he got he, roll. he got he got points for the throw. Yeah, he's cagey. Uh, he, he'll he'll play. Uh, he'll walk a fine line with the <coughs> rules. You'll see. Uh, he's he won't be aggressive, but he'll he'll do just enough to stay out of trouble. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this uh, uh, Willie Spears is he pretty is he pretty young? Yeah, he's he's in his early twenties. He's out of Atlanta, yes. Georgia. Where's Kristoff from? Phoenix, Arizona? Yes, they're same move, uh, another Coca. I think. Kristoff will be very hard to, to catch. He doesn't leave many openings. Now, has he been uh, an Olympic player in the past? Or no, but he was... Uh, I, I think he was an alternate in, uh, in 88. And he was in the trials in '84, so he's 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 been up in the top five or six, but he's never been number one or two. More in the 90 kilogram category. 
Yes. Yes. I think this is Willie's second nationals. So uh, he, he has a future in this sport. Uh, now, this is the na men's and women's national judo 1998. How do you qualify if someone out there is getting in or is interested in the getting into something like this? You know, how do you Well, go about every every state oh, another another sound 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 Every state has a state championships and you have to you have to either be uh, an elite an elite athlete in the seniors or you have to be a, an elite junior or you have to place in our in us in your state championships in order to qualify to fight in the nationals. Uh, Christoph is clearly ahead in this match, but he's got to keep oh yeah, there it is. That's a full that point. point. You right see he, he's ahead by two Yukos yet he's got to keep the attack up. That's why judo's exciting. There's no mm -hmm. you know, no backing off, no holding on to what you have. Can't just tie him up on the ropes and, and take your no, no, you, but, no. But Christoph has a little different style. He lets he lets the player come to you, come to him, and he doesn't go after it like if you saw Sangrario or Christina, mm -hmm. they came over the top and they right. they just kept right. coming after him. Christoph's a little different. He, this, he he lets his player come to him. This match should be exciting. We have two top players, uh, young players, Theo Karakostas and Dmitry Lezenenkov. Uh, Dmitry's a Russian uh, a Russian kid from New York. And he was our top junior player for about three, four years. And now moving into seniors, he's trying to make his uh, way into the medal round. Theo uh, moved out to Colorado Springs. He's originally from Florida. And he's, you know, trying to make his way in there. Theo also is a top junior player. They're both, they're both 21, 21 years old, so they got a great future ahead of themselves. What's the average, uh, you know, they say an NBA athlete hits his peak around 26, 27, 28. Well, it, it, it depends what weight category. The lighter weights, it's younger. The heavier weights, it's a little older. Dimitri is in white on the left, and Theo is uh, with his back to us in red. Looking for that inside. Theo Reed. Yeah, Theo seems to be putting the pressure on. I wouldn't be surprised if Dimitri got a penalty fairly soon, like now. See, the really good players know the rules well and know how to use the rules. Mm -hmm. So Theo on the right knows that he just made a strong attack and Dimitri wasn't attacking. He kept the pressure on, didn't let Dimitri get in, and now Dimitri should get a penalty. <coughs> He's giving it to both of them. They're both, both getting it. <coughs> that should start him up, give him a little more aggressive. That's what it, it's intended to do. Right now, Theo has the control. You see the way he tries to keep his his right arm, right hand off his lapel? Mm -hmm. Whoa, almost got it. Dimitri is known for being stronger in the beginning and slowly withering out near the end of the He's match. He's not a well-conditioned athlete on, on the same level as our, our top international players. So yeah, he loses a lot toward the end of the match. And you can see just from, I mean, five minutes of the shoot, they have to be super. Oh, oh. nice attack. That Real was nice of Soto Gary. <coughs> Soto Gary. Now Theo's going for the, for the Juju arm lock. I think he has it. He has it. He's got the arm right there. Nice arm bar. Nice. Very That's nice. why you see athletes, you see players go directly for the arm because it's a matter of seconds oh, the match is over. To turn, nice some, to, to turn somebody on their back and hold them for 25 seconds, you know, that's a lot, lot, lot more difficult. Great see, match. This it's is a big, big win for Theo. It's a big one for Theo. Now we're going to get to see Brian Olson, who's our uh, uh, world uh, bronze medalist. And you'll see what kind of a class that he's in different than anyone else. And you'll be fighting uh, Sean Watson out of uh, Houston, Missouri. Who, who's been around for a while. Sean's about 28 years old. And he's been around. He's a, he's a seasoned veteran. He's never been in the top three or four, but he's always, he's always been, been in the top five or six. So he's, he, he's not an easy match. There's Brian, Brian right there. on our on our left. Brian is an excellent grip fighter, excellent feet. Watch the he way broke he broke that grab. Yeah. Watch the way he controls. Yeah. His he's, he's got his grip, and watch him use his feet. There it is. It's oh. over. Just the, right onto the yeah, back. Just outstanding footwork. And you saw Sean kind of give the shrug, like, "What am I going to do?" 
Yeah, he is that good. Wow. That one was uh, under 30 seconds. Well, Brian's playing the best judo of his, uh, his life. I mean, he's he's in the class in the top three or four in the world. Oh, so. Look at the coaches there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, what a guy. I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> That's the coach's <laughs> son, too. That's my right son. there. Yeah. Mark Cohn, my uh, assistant coach and lawyer. <laughs> and lawyer. There you go. Oh, we have a uh, medal ceremony. Well, we oh, did. We, we did. We did. <clears throat> Now so we're back in the nah. You see at the level of Brian Olsen is in the championship oh, match absolutely. how he, you know, handled it. And, and uh, uh, Sean Watson, you know, won, not decisively, but he handled his way up there, and he was just no match for Brian. Mm -hmm. Br Brian's in a different class, much like Jimmy Pedro is, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Not so. quite at Jimmy's level, yeah. but just about there. He's getting there. Very proud of what but he's you, done. But we saw some exciting matches, some great groundwork. What we oh, call absolutely. Newaza, some great arm locks. Absolutely, that one... Uh, was that Theo? Theo. Theo, Theo yeah. on that was amazing. That was a, that was a great arm lock. And then, like you said, Brian just came out aggressive and took it right to Sean. And, yeah. And, and you saw you saw another one of our young kids coming up, uh, San, Sangrario, who we mm -hmm. call Mimi. Mimi's her nickname. Mimi. And she's going to be a tough, tough player yeah. in, the, in the 2004, 2008. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it was exciting. And look for Brian probably in the 2000. 2000. You see a lot of them. Absolutely in 2000. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we, we have, uh, what do we got coming up? We got, uh... You know, in the next two segments, we're going to start seeing some kids from our school, you know, guys that we've trained. Now, Brian is someone who has come through our camps. We run camps during the year mm -hmm. at Cones Judo Club. And uh, we've had Brian at our camps many years when he was younger. And uh, we have a couple of our other kids coming up in these uh, next two segments that are from our school that train with us. Great, great. If somebody wanted to uh, get more information on this, and or getting into the judo game, you know. Our our club is located in Buffalo Grove. Uh, our uh, we're in a uh, town center shopping center, three o three o two McHenry Road, and we're we're in the book. So uh, you know, you could give us a call right. or come on in. Number was four five nine five three six six. We start plug. kids at four years old, and we and you know, we train uh, people at all different levels. We have beginners that are just learning for the first time, adults and kids, and we have. Uh, you'll see in the segment after the next uh, two-time Olympian, Colleen Rosensteel, who I don't want you to scare you when you see her fight, but uh, <laughs> she's... We, uh, we also have more junior national champions than any other club in the country, so uh, we're, we're real proud of the fact that we train, train these juniors and take them all the way up to, uh, to the Olympics and international uh, tournaments, so... Great, so we'll look forward to that, and uh, if anybody wants to get get involved, they can look you guys up and sure. maybe become the next <clears throat> Olympic gold champion, 2008. So it uh, looks like they're getting ready back on the mat. Um, That'll be one second. One uh, second, they're still going. Well, we got coming up the, the under 78 Ooh. kilo for women and the under 100 kilo for men. And now you'll see some, uh, <clears throat> some strong men looking out there. Coming out, uh, some of the bigger boys. Yeah, big and strong. You can see the speed and the strength in the under uh, really? under kilos. Yeah. Is it more yeah. of a, a power game? You, you're you're going to see much that. more power in the in the heavyweight divisions. Yeah, yeah. yeah, more power. But the hundred kilo has power and speed, whereas the over hundred kilo, you're going to see more oh. power. Mm -hmm. Where the, the kind of where the heavy heavier guys are slower, but are finished. So then, when we when we get to the hundred kilos, we're going to see some big boys and. <laughs> really ready to throw their muscle around. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So great. Let's uh let's shut her down and then we'll get back to ringside. It was uh, an exciting first half of matches oh, at definitely. this year's championship. Uh, looks like our first match, bronze medal match, uh, Colleen Simonelli, uh, her opponent had to uh, bow out. Well, she, Amy Tong is a young, another young, another one of our young uh, girls coming up, and uh, she injured herself. She hurt her shoulder uh, the match before, so they withdrew her. So they, they didn't want any further injuries. So I think it was a smart move. You know, she has uh, she's 17 years old. She has a lot of years ahead of her. So why risk uh, right. serious injury? Coaches looking out for their athletes. Sure. Colleen is from Illinois, you know, student of John Gusman. Yes, yeah, from Naperville. And uh, <clears throat> she's 41 years old. Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. This this division is is the new weight class that they added, 78 kilos. Uh, here we go into the next match. We got uh, Mandy um, McCoy and Norma Gonzalez. Yeah, and, uh, it's an inter interesting match because I don't know much about either one of them. These are both basically new 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 girls coming up. Uh, I don't I don't know their ages, but uh, uh, one of them is going to have a uh, uh, national points. So. I believe Mandy's in the, in the red and uh, Norma in the white here. Yeah, it looks that way, yes. Oh, there's a high grip Hawaii. Trying to work that arm out, turn it over. Yeah. You see, this division used to be 72 uh, kilos, which was Sandy Bacher's division. So. Uh, but when they moved, when they moved, the, changed, when they changed the divisions and made the 70 kilo, Sandy moved down to 70 kilos, and they added the 78 kilos. So a lot of these girls would be fighting heavyweight uh, before they changed the divisions. Oh, oh, there's a sankaku. Good, nice sankaku. There it is. There Watch it is. turn up. She gets up. They're gonna call Sakomi. There it is. At the pin. Wow, wow. that looks painful. Now, now you see the. In order to choke, the tighter makes, the more powerful the choke. So you need, she needs to have a top foot and knee pit of her straight foot, and then when she, if she flex it, yeah. that's where the choke would come from. So that's not that's not at all a choke right now. So she's got her foot a little slid down a little too far out yes. of the uh, yeah. Yes, and, and her foot is too far down her back. Mm -hmm. It should be behind her neck. But still, it was good enough for the hold down. There she goes, and she got the, the victory. she got the pin. Looks like that. Not only did it no. look painful, it was well, painful. She, she was squeezing. Uh, she was squeezing. Normal. You still so she, can squeeze, but yeah. it, it's different between squeezing and choking. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to choke anybody unconscious, but but you, you're, you're still going to choke them a little bit. So uh, she felt the effects of her uh, her sankaku. That was a great move by Mary. Yeah. Now we're going into our gold medal match right. with Bradley and Benicasa mm -hmm. and Colette Lemays. Colette is a young, uh, a junior. 19 years old and has been real successful in juniors and is, you know, starting to make a name for herself in the seniors now, which is great. And Robin, who is uh, in her 30s, is a world-class uh, uh, triathlete. Is that right? So uh, multi-sport? Yes. Person. And we have uh, Robin in the red and Colette in, Colette in the white. 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 Yes. Colette's from San Francisco and Robin is from uh, San Diego. Colette doesn't have the maturity and the, and the strength that Robin has, so this is, uh, in that respect, it's a little bit of a mismatch. But Colette is definitely the future in this division for us. What is, now you, you've said the juniors and the seniors, what is the break? 19 years old. 19 is when you become an yeah. official senior. Yeah. There's the double A. That, that's a wrestling move. You see we were talking about uh, holding your hands out in front of you? She got the, she got double leg. Mm -hmm. when, when the people play low, mm -hmm. get their hands out in front of you, you can't get that move. They're gonna they're gonna fight again in a couple weeks. Oh, and, and she got the win. She got the win. That was a full point. They're gonna again. They were they were gonna fight. They're gonna fight again in a couple weeks. And I, and I have a feeling the outcome's gonna be a little different. Tell that out for a little revenge. Yes. Uh, she she's been to every camp that that we offered, and she uh, won uh, she won the junior uh, junior international in Sweden, and she won the junior Pan Ams and. And she's uh, she's much improved since since this uh, competition last April. Here we go. We got Tony Esposito he's from our club and uh, Joseph Roberts. Tony just came out of uh, a retirement. He stopped doing judo and went into to the Marines and uh, was doing Greco-Roman wrestling and was very successful. In fact, he, he was ranked in the top six in USA Wrestling at Greco-Roman. Impressive. Yeah. So he's just coming back. He's just his first big tournament. And a matter of fact, before he left, his his last victory was against Brian Olson. In the oh, ladder. He beat he beat, beat Brian he beat Brian like six years ago. That was his last major victory. Wow! So he's so, been out for quite so he's, a while. He's been out for quite a while, and uh, it takes takes about a year year and a half to adjust. So fighting for a bronze is is quite good. So even though he has the judo background, made the switch to Greco, it's still a different mm -hmm. feel. For oh. you as a judo player? He, he's basically a judo player, but it, but coming back, it takes about a year just to get accustomed and get the feel of competing at this level. 
So, so you, I, I think you're going to see Tony gas a little bit toward the end of the match, and he's kind of hesitant to make make attacks because it's you know it's still you know he just came back a couple months ago. And in wrestling, you are kind of more on a you're a wait and see. In, uh... Oh yeah, the the rules the rules are definitely different. The rules are definitely different. Now, Tony's groundwork is excellent. Yeah. Uh, out of your club, eh? yes. Tony, Tony started, started with us when he was 10 years old. He moved here from, from Colorado, I think from Denver when he was 10. And he's been with us uh, you know, ever since. Again, he took, it took about a six year hiatus to go into the Marines and, and to wrestle. Matter of fact, he took second in Illinois State uh, High School champion, uh, Wrestling Championships oh, for Conan High School. See how the guy hooked his leg mm -hmm. when he came across into Sankat? This other kid's an up and comer too from, uh, where, where's he from, Kansas, Kansas City? City. Yeah, he's he's like he's in his early twenties too. So uh, this is this is a good match. I noticed how he wrapped that leg and it's instinctive just from the years oh, yes. of training. This uh, he's amazing. Couldn't obviously couldn't see it, just had to know it was there. Well, Tony is dominating this match at this time. Looks like he's uh Oh, there goes the gee, hockey fight. See why you uh you gotta have that gi tied tight. It makes a difference. It, it, ta it takes a good year to get in competition shape. I mean, the shape that you really want want to be in internationally. So you know, he's Tony's been was back about two or three months since uh, uh, before the before this competition. So he's not in the best shape possible, which I think hurt him in the end of the fight. Now, when you're, is it kind of like boxing where you do a lot of road work in addition to your cross training? Is what you call it. Yes, you're lifting weights, you're doing conditioning, and uh, but your main conditioning should is, be done is, is judo. judo. Just get out on the mat and go. Yeah, but Tony's got to get his right hand up. His right hand is too low. Yeah, he's bent over. And you, that's you got to try. You yeah. got to try and keep your back straight. Once you start bending over, you're, you're in a weak position. Isn't the the rule of thumb to be? The one whose hips are lower is the one in control, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's just a myth no. I may have heard along yeah. the streets. I don't know where you heard it, uh, but uh, it's not true. Hips low. Yeah, you know, I don't know where I heard that either. Yeah. Hips low or you can't throw, yeah. I think. The there's same there's a stomach fill right into the arm block and he missed the arm. Still trying to get it. Yeah. His arm bars are very good. This kid's, he's, this kid's pretty good on the ground. He's very good defensively. He's very, very hard to get. He's going for that inside leg. See, see, Tony's letting him grab way too high around him. Too deep. You see? Yeah. There's, there's a sacrifice. You see, he never should have let him all the way around his back. He should have had his hand up. Mm -hmm. See, outside of that, he's winning the match. So he doesn't want to be there either. Tony's well, definitely been the aggressor. Yes. Now you'll see well, that the... Uh, looks like he's hurt. Or I think he got hit in the, in the eye. There's, you see my brother and I over there coaching him, and there's Jason Morris, 1992 Olympic silver medalist. And again, my son, who's uh, actually there's no legal problem. <laughs> the uh, now here's a question for some of us who have never competed on, on that, that kind of level: How much you've been in the ring, and when your coaches are yelling and shouting instruction to you, do you really hear what they're saying? Well, you got to realize that that's not the first time I'm coaching Tony. I coach Tony every local tournament, every regional tournament. He's tuned into us, mm -hmm. so it's when you see a whole bunch of people yelling at one point, you know, realize that every every week or every other week, he's tuned into my voice. So no, he definitely hears me. I see his hand is up again. That's where it needs to be. Now we can keep him from doing the sacrifice. Uh, now he's bending too far. Trying to get that hook. Looked like he was trying to get him around on the hip to throw yes. him. Yeah. 
nice either it breaks. You see, when, when they go near the edge in the referee close mate, that's when you coach your player. It's real hard to, to get their attention or for them to hear you when they're in the middle of a fight. You see? If you are now, you'll see Steve and, and Jason and myself talking to him. See him looking over yeah, to us. Yeah, he just gave him a, yeah. a motion. Have you ever been in a situation where you were missing something and maybe you caught that from uh, the coach as you were coming back to restart and used uh, the information? M myself as a player? Yeah. No. I'm, I'm usually uh, so focused, so toned, tuned into my play. I really don't hear anybody around me, you know. You know, and, and again, I was geared to when I break, when the referee calls break or mate, that's when I look over to mm -hmm. the side. Never when I'm fighting. And I never look at my opponent's coach. I don't care. You know, I have my game plan, I know what I want to do, and, and that's what I go about doing. Tony's transition looks really slow here. It's yeah, usually, he, it's very he, good. He's a little tired now. Just getting bad. The match is just about over. They ran out of a little gas there at the end. Well, this guy's got two penalties. Uh, uh, Again, which happens quite often. Mm -hmm. you know, and when you're grip fighting, when you're going for the high grip, sure, it's not unusual to catch an elbow in the face or catch a catch a finger in the eye. Now, would you get penalized for an inadvertent elbow? No. Or? no, no, no. There has to be intent to injure. All right? If there's no, if the referees do not feel there's intent to injure, and then then it's nothing. fingernail up and sure, never sure. know. So. Well, you, people don't, you, with the way gripping is, no one has long fingernails in judo. Yeah, you can't. Because when they pull the gear away, your fingernail will come right off. Ah. You, <laughs> no one has long fingernails in judo. So I'd fit right in then. Yeah. <laughs> Except but I'd uh, but, but a, a, finger, a finger in the eye is good enough. There's no question about it. Affected. But you could see now why the stalling rules are so enforced because if you hit, it, you know, it's easy to say you hurt your knee and they stop the match, a doctor comes out and looks at you, they, they, they I mean, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now the doctor could technically stop this fight. Sure if can. He, if he sure saw can. a problem. He's not going to, though. But, but the referee has final say. I mean, if it's, if it's like, like the doctor that was out there was not his doctor. So if the doctor says he can't fight and he says he wants to fight, then it's the referee's decision. But like if you're, if you're a U.S. team and a U.S. doctor comes out and says you, you, know, you can't fight, then the referee will stop the match. But if you're, if you're a U.S. team and the German doctor comes out, mm -hmm. the referee won't stop the match. Right. You know, so it, it, the referee has the final decision on, on everything. Non-stop. They separate, and it's, they don't even get to their mark. They're back at yeah, it. Yeah, right there we go. Now what? Now he's going to try to stall and take as much time as he can. Just you know, wait as much time off the clock as he can. Oh, running for the shoot. Match is just about over. They both, you know, you could tell they both look, uh, tell you, you could tell they've been in a fight. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. A lot of effort. A lot of energy expended. Yeah, I mean, one. except for that one move, Tony wins the match. <clears throat> so, Tony, what, what, what kind of score did you guys have on your scorecard here? Well, he threw Tony for a half a point. Half a point. <clears throat> And he had uh, violations he had up two, to a two stallings, which yeah, was up a to Yuko. a Yuko. If he would have had one more violation, it would have changed. I 
And Tony would look forward to fighting him again. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they'll meet again. Now, we'll now we're going to see uh, a two hand and uh, Brad Anderson. Brad Anderson's a tough, strong uh, uh, player. From, and Col I, from Colorado Springs. From Colorado Springs, and so is uh, Atu. And Atu is our young, up and coming athlete. He's, I mean, he's like 22 years old, but he came through our junior program, and he's, uh, he's really strong. Atu, you Atu in is the in the right, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, this division is a new division, too, the 100, the 100 kilos. It used, to be, it used to be 95 kilos. So uh, Atu and Brad, Bradley used to, used to fight heavyweight. Which is unlimited. There's mm -hmm. no weight categories. You know, now now since they added this division, it makes it much better for these two. Fight someone a little bit more of their size. Yeah. I mean, because I, I, we had our mm -hmm. two in the heavyweight division in Europe, and he was fighting fighting guys 300 pounds, 320 pounds, and he was only 240. Here here he, he makes 220, and he's he's at the top of the weight weight division. Now you're going to see a big grip match. This is right on right, strong right. And see, no one's going to, everyone's going to try to get the advantage, and no one wants to give anything up. These two train together mm -hmm. at the Olympic Training Center, so they, they know each other quite well. Now, is there such a thing as a uh, southpaw in judo? Sure. 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 In fact, I'm a lefty. Are no, you really? No, they're both there getting, you, you yeah. see, they're both getting violations together. And that's okay with that, too, because Brad got the first one for having two hands on the same side of the gi. You can't grab. Uh, uh, the lapel and the sleeve from the same side for more than three seconds without making an attempt. That would be considered a stall, then. That would be considered an illegal grip. Illegal grip. So this is all sheer power. See, so yeah, Atu's going to uh, gonna use his feet and just maintain mm -hmm. control. Not that, you see, he's not going to look to throw him. He's going to look to win by violation. Now you're going to see Brad get another violation, which is going to make it which is his third one. That means he's got an a, a equivalent to a half a point. It's called a Keikoku. A two is playing a very strategic match. He'll get his grip and he'll pull, pull Brad around and he'll try and get him, get him a stalling, a non-combat activity. And he'll move his hips, he'll try to use his feet. There's See? definitely a lot, of, a lot more strategy than the layman just looking at two guys throwing each other around. It's oh, definitely a chess match. You see, Atu is happy to have an equal. You see, now they're both going to get the violation now. And Atu wins the match. And Atu wins the match. He'll give it to Atu first. The double hand. That, th that means to fix your gi. Okay. And that we know so is stalling. End, end of the match. It's called Hansoku yes. Maki. End of the match. Which means the disqualification. And Atu takes it. Atu wins the medal. Yeah. Yeah. They're good friends. They, they train together. We can maybe look for Atu coming up uh, through the ranks uh, yes. in the future. Yes. Atu well, should, should be our Olympic uh, hopeful if uh, it's either him or Tony. You know, Tony's coming up and he's a strong kid and we'll see what happens with Tony. Of course, so he's my student. I'm not going to... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well be because of this new division, it really really gives Atu an opportunity in, internationally. In, internationally. Because fighting, fighting players uh, 50, 60, 70 pounds heavier than him is, he, he didn't have a chance. So th this is a great division for him. And as you see, he, uh, he won the national Handled championships. Quite well. yes. Sure, sure, absolutely. And he was able to use his strength, where before, you know, when you're using your strength against someone who's twice as strong as you, it doesn't hold out as much. Right. So uh, he right. played really well. He now, played really well. Speaking of the big guys and the, the 78 kilogram women, they're coming up. Yeah, uh, and yeah, our student is, uh, is number Morrison's one in the deal. country, so uh, I'm looking forward to watching her match. Right. Yeah, Colleen yeah. has won several international medals this last two years uh, and beating the, the Cuban world champion uh, last year. So uh, you'll see that she's a real uh, yeah, she, she strong placed, player. She placed in Czech, she placed in Austria, and she took, uh, she took fifth in Germany and in uh, Hungary, so uh, she's, she's, she's doing quite well on the European circuit. Wow, that's great. That's great. So we'll look for her, too. We're getting a lot of uh, previews yeah. for uh, the 2000 games coming up. Yes, and in the heavyweight, in the heavyweight men, you'll see uh, for a bronze medal, actually the two hopefuls for uh, uh, the Olympic team is, are going to fight Martin Boonzer and Joe Felton for the bronze medal because the gold medal match are, are guys that are not going to be in the running for the Olympics. Is that right? Yes, they're both <coughs> retired. They came out. They ended up fighting for, for, for the gold, but they're not going to go through the qualifying. They're, uh, 
they're, they're both ex-Olympians. <clears throat> Rene is a two-time Olympian, and I think Leo's a two-time Olympian yes. too. So they retired and they just came out just to fight in our nationals. Is so that right? it's, it's going to be a fun match. Well, they'll leave it for somebody else new. They've been there. Let somebody come on out and uh, yeah. kind of show their yeah. wares. But, so that, but, they, but they both, they both being chairman <coughs> of the uh, coaching and training subcommittee, they, they both sent me letters saying they do not want this tournament to count toward the Olympic qualifying uh, points. So they're both out of the running for the 2000 Olympics, but they're having a great time fighting. That's great, and that's right. That's another thing we didn't even touch on. You're the chairman of the... Uh, coaching and training subcommittee. Yes, the, yes. We, we have a committee of seven or eight coaches that that sets policy and, and training and decides where we train and, and what tournaments we hit, you know, for both the juniors and the seniors. So uh, our Olympic team uh, will be training in Japan uh, and in Europe, and we're going to hit the European tour. So uh, so these players have, have a lot of training and a lot of competition ahead of them. So. It's going to be interesting, just to get them ready for the 2000 To get them ready, sure. Well, you have to be on top of your game to compete. Yeah, you, we, you, you have to compete with the, with the world's best. Mm -hmm. And the world's best are in Asia and, Japan, and Europe. So well, we that's have why to, we go yeah, over there. We have to provide a program for them to be able to train at that level and compete at that level. So, uh, yeah, that's what we do. And it's a lot of time. It's a lot of hard work. And uh, it's not uh, traveling in the lap of luxury either. Right. We don't, you know, we don't go on a private jet like the Bulls do. Mm -hmm. You don't have the Olympic charter. We don't have the Olympic <laughs> charter. No. We have a lot of fun. There's no question about it. It's a lot of fun. But it's uh, a lot of hard work involved. You know, when you go to dedication. Europe, you, you, you go to four, four different uh, countries in Europe. You're living out of a suitcase. Right. You're mm -hmm. going from one place to the other. You go from a tournament to a training camp. Then you go to another country. And... Uh, and That's a lot, where you go. A lot of times you travel by train, yeah. which is you know six to eight hours from one city to the next. So it it gets a little difficult. Well, here we are oh, with the heavyweight yeah. women and Dolores Brody and Charmaine. There's uh, the knockdown. Charmaine's from uh, Chicago. Uh, she's been around a long time. Charmaine is on the left in white. <clears throat> Dolores out of Hinkle, Hinkle California. Yeah. Yes. Dolores, Dolores has been around a long time too. Yes. She was she was a middleweight champion back in the 70s. Also, this is a sport, obviously, that you can continue in for quite some time. If, if you enjoy competing, it's, you enjoy it. you know, you know then, then you could compete. It. And we have masters, too. So we have age groups from 30 to 35 and 36 to 40 and 41 to oh. 45. So, you know, you know, you don't have to stop competing because, you know, you're over the hill. I mean, you mm -hmm. can keep going. That's great. You know. At least it gives you an avenue yeah. if you wish to do uh, it. Do so. th these girls got a lot of heart because because they're past their prime and they and they, they keep fighting in our seniors. So you know, you know Charmaine likes yeah. Charmaine likes to counter backwards. She likes to let you uh, come in and grab you around the waist and try to throw you backwards, which now, she did earlier. You saw. Now here's a you see a, a shorter athlete versus taller now in. Obviously, you can get up and under if you're smaller. Is there any advantage to height being oh, tall versus certainly, short? Sure, certainly have a reach. Yeah. Absolutely. Control. You control, see that leverage. reach right there? If she, if Dolores could have stayed on her feet and hopped her with her leg up, she, she could have thrown her. her. So yeah, there's no question yeah. about it. Having a, a yeah. if an advantage of height makes a difference. Just the beat, just like the mat. Yeah, you'll. Uh, Dolores isn't a heavyweight though; she's a middleweight, and, uh, and they're both in their mid thirties. So yeah. it's, a, it's a fun watch. It's a fun match to watch. But you know, these these two women aren't, aren't really going anywhere. They're just having a good time. Looks like we have a contact problem. Yes. For Dolores, you'll see in the match to come. Uh, you'll see Colleen fight, and it won't be a long fight, but you'll see why she's clearly number one in the country in this weight class. And she's fighting the number one junior in the country. Okay, so it's right. going to be a number one senior against a number one junior. There she's got her hand around the back. Mm -hmm. You see her take her back watch. There oh. it is. That's a full see? point. Match is over. Wow. I thought uh, it looked like it was going to go the other way to the woman. Yeah, there she got countered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if she would have had a little more pull with her right hand and, and extended more, she may have gotten her. But it that doesn't work that way. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. 
Well, make sure you don't blink so you don't miss yeah, this next exactly. one. Yeah, exactly. No, I think the next one we're going to Doris and Cynthia. Doris Wilson out of Phoenix and uh, Cynthia Nichols no, out of Pittsburgh. Well, maybe, no, I think you're right. I'm getting the signal from the booth that it will be Colleen's fight. There's Colleen and yeah. Lou waiting there. She's a very intense fighter. And, and help me with this name. She'll be fighting uh, Nanushka St. Perry out of New York, Brooklyn. Sweet, sweet young girl. She's 16 years old. She just won the Junior Pan Ams in Venezuela, and uh, uh, she's she'll probably take Colleen's place as soon as Colleen retires. So we're, we're kind of seeing the and, and and you're seeing seeing the blue gee for the first time. It was just passed at the at the uh, World Championships that as of 1999 that. It won't be red and white, it'll be blue and white, and in blue, you'll have to wear a blue gi. Oh, and that's really? basically for television. Here you'll see Colleen will take her uh, strong grip. It's a, it's, a, it's a little different match watching with a blue gi. Watch, here comes a high grip. Uh -huh. There you go. And a quick throw right out of the box. What was that, all of uh, six seconds? Yes. Yes, Colleen's got a very strong turn, and uh, you don't want to... Uh, go behind her. And she's a very strong high grip. She seems to always get her high grip. And that seems to be a big advantage in, in Well it's know. it's control. You know, if you get that high grip you're controlling your opponent. She's a great chance in the two thousand Olympics. Great chance. She's wow. been training really hard. Really hard. That was awesome. I'll show you take her game face off. Yeah. And there goes the smile yeah. and the congratulations. There's big Steve. hug for the coach. Yeah. <laughs> We got a little smooch there too. Yeah. I'm real proud of her. She works really hard. Yeah. We'll definitely be watching her. And she's yeah. in the best shape of her life now, so we're gonna see great things from her. That's great. And now it's time for the big boys. Yes. Yeah, the heavyweights. Oh. Who, who do we have here? Uh, Joseph uh, Felton from uh, Massachusetts and Martin. No, 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 this, no this is no, this is a. Uh, Paul and John Serban. John Serban. Yes, John Serban and Paul uh, Malagliata. John Serban is on the left in white. John's a past John. national champion. Yes, yes, but this is the open division, and John is is. John was never really a heavyweight player. He just uh, ended up as he got older. Getting a little heavier. Oh, now we're oh, here. Here, here, we oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This, this is a match of the two top players. Yeah. Now Martin. Joseph Falcon. Yes. Jo Joseph is in the USA gi, and Martin, who's our student, is uh, on the left. Joe played professional football. He played for the Detroit Lions. I think New England Patriots. You watch so he's a powerful guy, offensive lineman. Is that right? Yeah. See, both these guys are strong. So these guys got to yeah. be up yes. here 270 then. And, oh Martin, yes. Martin's a bodybuilder. Yeah. You'll see when Martin gets his grip, his, his right hand secure, he'll be real dangerous. There, he'll get it up. Here it goes. Good attack. Now he's going to throw Soto. He's, uh, yeah. You can see the setup. There it goes. It's, it's, it's there, there it goes. goes. Now, does that count? Is he landing on his back outside? It counts. Okay. As long as your supporting foot is inside, is it counts. Okay. So it, it doesn't matter where he lands. It matters where your supporting foot is. As long as it's in the red, it's good. Yeah, that was a good, solid win for Marty because uh, Marty's going to, uh, hopefully, Marty's going to be our uh, Olympic uh, player. Yes. He works really hard, and we have all the confidence in him. Oh, that was a quick, nice throw. Yes. Clean. And you saw the setup as yes. he was working. He worked him down the mat, mm -hmm. and he knew it was coming. Yeah. But there was nothing uh, that Joe could do about it. No, he, he not at all. He knew it was coming, there's nothing he could do. That's when you know you're a great athlete. I think maybe we'll we'll pan back over, hopefully, and, and catch the end of the of the other match. Yeah, there we, we go. go. And that uh, looks like uh, you're gonna see. Serban likes to drop to his knees if he can. He's fighting a guy who's a little bit too big for him, I think. But if he can get inside and drop to his knees, drop under him between his legs, he'll be able to throw him. It looks like the mats came apart a little bit. I think John's a little too light for this uh, this weight class. Is it just a matter of 
not making weight that sometimes you have to jump into the next there, one? Or? That and because he feels he can't win in that weight class. He feels he has a better chance in a heavier weight class. So he doesn't lose the weight. He probably, he's probably around 225, 230, and he doesn't want to cut to 5 or 10 pounds mm -hmm. to get under 220 because he knows it's a lot tougher than the, than the heavyweight division. E even, though, even though in Europe and in the world, the, you know, they're, both, they're both just as tough. Right. But, but to, to make it there, you know, it's much easier in the heavyweight than it is in the, in the 100 or the 90 kilos. And then once you make it, that could be a difficult thing. It might be easy in your country to get in a different division, yes. but in the world it can be every, different. Every division is tough. I mean, every, that's every division is tough. You know, in, in, in the past two Olympics, more countries had, there, were, there, were, there was more rep representation in judo than any other sport in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So more countries had teams, uh, judo teams, than, than in any other sport. There was over a hundred countries that participated in judo. So you really are getting the cream of the crop then. And, and to be honest with you, there, you, know, you know, there's about 40 or 50 countries that are tough, that have tough competitors. So it's Especially with the break up with the Soviet Union. It's very, very difficult now. When John just went up over the train to get that on yeah, the top. Yeah, I don't uh, see him having success with that. See, the guy's just too big. He's going to have to try to go under him. Now, could you, uh, a la, I guess, professional wrestling, can you pick somebody sure up can. and sure. Sure. body sure. slam them, so to speak, that, if you can get it? It's the landing that counts. So, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how you throw him. It matters how he lands. So if he lands flat on his back, if you pick him up over your head... There, or you see? Oh, he's on his drop. knees. He just tried to go under him like yeah. that. That's you know, what he does. So if you pick him up, if you pick him up in a fireman's or over your head and throw him, if you throw him on his face, you, you get nothing. But if you throw him on, your, on his back, you get a full point. Stalling. See, I'm learning my hands. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're waving it off. it off, you see? And they're right. The, the two judges are waving it off. It's always a majority. That's good. That way it's fair, yeah, yeah, fair e for everyone. Even though the referee makes the calls, and controls the match. It's still a majority, so he could be overruled. Looks like the bigger guy's getting a little winded. You don't realize how long five minutes oh, is God. until yeah, he actually fights. Yeah, that's five minutes of nonstop. I'd be out there for about thirty yeah. seconds and <laughs> wanting a timeout. <laughs> Here, here's the drop sound, Aggie. To be honest with you, it used to be finals at one time was was eight was ten minutes and then eight minutes then six minutes, and they just brought it down to five. Oh, there he goes. Move, yeah. uh, see if he can get in solid, he could throw him a cut. Paul seems to be pretty quick, though. Seems to be yeah, able to get a lot he's not bad. I've, I've never seen him before. Oh, broke that grip right away. He's going to go under him again. I should drop knee sail now. There we go. Almost got him. See, it gets difficult to uh, to attack when someone keeps falling down to their knees all the time. Mm -hmm. what, what what could you do to counter something like well, that? Well, what you do is you win the grip. You see how you could see the difference in the gripping now. Mm -hmm. Now that John is being able to get his grip, Paul denied the grip before. Paul's got to win the grip to keep him from doing that. And that's a problem when you start fatiguing. You, you lose the grip, and once you lose the grip, you, you lose the match. It's like Paul's. You know, it's funny. That's the first thing to go. That it's goes is the forearms. Yeah. So w once you start fatiguing, it's real hard. It's real hard to win the grip. See, that's you kind of a tough. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. that's a non-combat activity. Right. Tried to double leg. Didn't want to commit to it. But Got a long way to go to get that double leg. That's the same way. So yeah, he's got to be more aggressive with the grip. Yeah, Paul's definitely fighting a defensive fight now. He's tired. You see, he so doesn't John, come over the top. Yeah, John's like getting that grip the solidly now. Here, John's Shaking got his right grip. Up. John's going to come under him again. He's got a good solid grip. He may throw. Yeah. Oh. I see. That's a, in my opinion, that's a false attack. 
by John. By, yes. by John. That's a is, what, see. I don't know if they'll give it to him. Yes, they False will. False attack. He called it. Is that just because he didn't commit and you know try to fully execute that? Uh, yeah. Well, what he should have done is he should have when he had his grip, he should have used a backward attack and then gone into his forward attack. There is a backward attack right there. So you just can't fall to your knees and make it and, and say it's an attack. You have to off balance your opponent. Mm -hmm. now what you want to be able to do is be in a position to throw forward and also be able to throw backward. Then your opponent's guessing and that's when your forward attack's going to work. Got about 10 seconds. In it looks like he's going to come up top and he's got to go seconds. quick. There, oh. there. You see, now that's not a false attack because he was under him. Mm -hmm. you know, and he had to step around. But John's winning by violation. You'll yeah. see that he's going to try to avoid. Yeah, times, times, times out. There it is. So John, uh, John, uh, John won the match on a viol. Well, he, I think on a violation. Yeah. Paul had two. Then John had one. Paul's Paul's inexperienced. John's been around a long time. He played. John played a much smarter match. It's, it's very interesting to sit down and, and actually watch, you know, and see the strategy involved. It's amazing. <coughs> and now the big gold match for now, the big boys. Yes. Leo to, White. To, to, show you, to show you how old they are, Leo, Leo fought me in the 76 Olympic trials. <laughs> That's how long he's been around. And it's Rene Capo in, Rene in the Capo, White. Rene Capo from, from Florida. Rene, Rene is an 88 and 96 Olympic team member and Leo's an 84-92 Olympic team member. Two two-time Olympians going at it. Very cagey, very smart players. Both very strong. Rene was no gu nose guard for Minnesota, uh, University of Minnesota. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, he was at the... He was all state in Florida, high school football. Yeah, he's a great athlete. Yeah. And Leo's one of the strongest judo players uh, we have. Extremely strong. Tired. They're both retired. They, you know, uh, they came out for this one tournament. They made it all the way to the finals, both of them. Made it to yes. the finals. you got to realize these guys are so experienced. And when we saw the match between Martin and Joe, both, both of those players are very inexperienced. Mm -hmm. Matt Robbins again? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice to see though, stop the match, make sure no one gets hurt with all the throwing. Oh, absolutely. And, and if you watch the referees, I mean, everything is formal. The protocol is so important. The way they sit, the way they, they score, uh, the, you know, all, all their hand signals, they're always exactly the same. I mean, every, these, these referees take, take tests. They have to pass tests at each level. And then they have to do so many clinics and so many reviews each year, or they'll, they'll get their license taken away. So it's kind of like uh, you got to work your way up through the smaller tournament circuit in order from, to progress. From local to regional to national to, to union to world. A lot of effort goes into being mm -hmm. a good referee. Fighters wanting to get back at it. They fought. They fought in, in ninety-six, 96 Olympic, Olympic trials. trials. They fought two out of three, and Rene won. Very close. I'm controversial and, and close fights. <clears throat> now, is that uh, is that how it works? Two out of three for Olympic trials. So in some divisions, it, it depends. You know, someone that like Jimmy or Brian that have so many international points and are ranked in the world, and they, they don't have to fight. They just have to be number one, and they're, they're on the team. But in divisions that are close, that go back and forth, uh, it comes down to a two out of three. Seems the fairest way to do it. Yeah, well, you know, the better player goes. Right. But you can see the strength and the grips. Not much 
which place to dangers you need a type. They're both strong. Leo's extremely strong. outside. Now Renee's got to keep that level of intensity up. He's got to keep that energy level. See, he's got a, a violation against Leo now. Now he's got to keep it up. If he lets Leo get it back, Leo gets back into the match. So the ref thought Leo was stalling there. Yes. You have to, you have to make, a, make a good attack within 15 to 20 seconds. Every 15 to 20 seconds, you really have to make an attack. That was uh, an interesting, that was in the field of play, I guess. Uh, that would have been an interesting little thing. Now, is your advantage, you see how the one hand goes inside and then the other guy goes over the top. Yeah. Are you more at an advantage to be on the inside or to have that arm wrapped around? Well, well it, it, lefty versus righty, yeah, it's, you have the advantage if you have the inside grip. But if you're fighting someone on the same side, righty versus righty or lefty versus lefty, you want, you want to be up high and, and like where Leo is. See, they're both, they're both ooh, good attack. I think the referee called Monte. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the referee called yeah. Monte. You, you want to control the head, so you want to control the collar. See, every, you know, both both these fighters are struggling to get that high grip, that high right grip. I noticed when uh, when Renee tried to shoot, Leo did something different. Maybe I missed him before, but he kicked his legs back right away. He sprawled. Away the he sprawled. Yeah. See, Rene keeps using his feet when he grips, and it's allowing him to get his grip. But he's got to keep it up. Plus, it makes him look like he's being more yes. offensive. Mm -hmm. Leo, Leo's in a strong position now. Leo's looking for that big throw. Trying to get him up. Leo could be getting a stalling now. He's not going to get it, but he... Yes, you've got to stand right at that line when you're fixing your gi. See how he's fixing it again? See how he's taking his time, making mm -hmm. sure everything's perfect? You see a lot of times when it just, it just comes undone, when not, they take the whole belt off and they take the white sash off and they put it down. They take, this, they take, take a long time, whereas all you really have to do is just, just double knot it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he got one. Okay. They oh. both got stallings. So Leo grabbed first that time. That's yeah. the first time. He's trying to get the high grip, but uh, Rene won't let him. I just did. See if he rips that grip away. Turn. Oh. He just took this leg. Kept him out of trouble. I love how they just get right back up and ready to roll. Yeah. It's uh, non-stop action. It's like a cat and mouse. Oh, oh almost, almost. jumped off at the last yeah. second. Yeah, Renee just got out of it. If you remember in the beginning of the match that uh, Renee was controlling the sleeve and keeping it off his gi mm -hmm. and controlling the grip, and he's not doing that anymore. And he needs to do that to win this match. Is it just a matter of fatigue? Well, it, as, as you start losing your conditioning and get tired, your grips go first. Well, it's also Leo not letting him do it, too. I mean, Leo understands that he's got to change his way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone's uh, uh, nullifying your offense, you've got to make an adjustment, too. Judges are back out. What are they? The doctor is out there looking at his finger. Ah. Thinking maybe we have a break. No, it's probably just some tape that's uh, unraveled or something, and they got to redo it. Or maybe he's bleeding. 
very cautious with blood. So right now we have uh, you have a pretty even match. Pretty even. I think uh, I think Renee's up by one stalling. And there have there been any? Uh, there hasn't been any points except for no, the stalling. No, no scores. No, no but, scores. Just, but Leo just, just Leo just made a nice attack though. And when there's no scores, they, they judge a match by the closest thing to a score. And it's just like a, a point system without scores. Mm -hmm. so, so then the stalling doesn't come into play if there's no. Oh, points? absolutely. But if the, if all but is if, even, if everything's, oh, okay. even. If everything's even. Okay. So it's not how many attacks; it's the quality of your attacks. Mm -hmm. So so if you if you attack me, you know, 25, 30 times, and I almost knock you down once, my quality of one attack is better than all all of your attacks. So I would win the match. It's basically the same principle as our scoring. Mm -hmm. It's the quality, not the quantity. Now you see, Renee right. had some blood on his gear, so he has to change his gear. And, and you'll see, the judge, the judge will not leave him out of his sight. The, wherever the player goes, to, one of the referees have to go. Is that right? And what's the reasoning? Just that? to make sure that well, the gear, you have your gear has to be a certain size. Your gear can't be too small. It's too hard to grip mm -hmm. when it's small. So you have to make. You see, he's going to check his gear right there. Plus, plus, you, you, you don't want him talking to your coaches and, and strategizing. Getting a drink or something like that. He's got to stay. He's got to go get his gi and come right back in the match. So even blood on the jersey will cause him to... On the gi, yes, absolutely. Stop. Absolutely. Make him change. I see him. He's filling it out right there trying to see... Make sure he's got grippables. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Now it's tied. And Leo, Leo had that nice attack at the end, so Leo may be a little bit ahead. He got, uh, he got a stalling for for not attacking. No, no, for not attacking. Now he's working the arm, he's trying to turn him over. Yeah. Leo, Leo's nearly impossible to turn over. Sounds like some experience. Yeah. <laughs> Renee's just wasting time. Renee, I don't know if he thinks he's behind or not at this point. No. Well, he's trying to take time off. Off the net. Renee's 36 years old. Leo's 39. Leo's 42. 42. Wow. They want to take as much time off the net. That was a nice move by Leo. Now, what was that called? That just I mean, that, that was, was just a, a way to turn him over into a pin. That was nice. I think it even caught Renee off guard. I it sure did. The, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if the ref called uh, a, ma a break a mate or not. He has to. Oh, there. Oh, Leo had his back turned for a second. Yeah. That was a quick start. Uh, the match is over now, so they have to bring out the flags. Well, there was only a few seconds left, so. Okay. Now so now we're, we're going to see the judges. Uh, uh, first time. Yes. Uh, they all saw that that Leo won. So Leo will get the get the victory. And Leo gets the victory. Man. It was it was close. I it was, was close. One near score. That one near at the end where he lifted him up and mm -hmm. Renee stopped him. That that was it. Like giving a wave to the crowd. Yes. That's a fan favorite. That's the most nice competition. Is that right?
retired. Now he's retired for good. In fact, he's coaching now. He's coaching game teams. Who else? Kiss the man. There you go. Yeah. What a great way to end it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, great match. That was very exciting. Very exciting. Something new that we haven't had on the on the oh, show. Yeah, before. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, obviously not <laughs> for, for you, you but bring it, you know, bring in knowledge. Yeah, I've been in the sport for about uh, close to close to forty years. So. Wow. Wow. But it just keeps getting better. And and, and growing. Too. And, yes. And yes. Growing. Yes. We've seen it on uh, other venues now. They have new sport judo. Uh, yeah, pro judo. It's pro uh, judo. yeah, actually it's it's showing right now. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, and what what would would there be any differences between new sport judo or yes, pro yes. judo? Yeah, the pro judo is, is is a different set of rules. They have minute and a, three minute and a half rounds. Okay. They have a smaller mat area. They have running time. So it's quite a bit different. It's but quite but a bit the different. The techniques and the scoring is basically the same. It's all the same. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, but it's it's a lot different. The strategy is different just because having running time in minute and a half rounds, you only fight for thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. So you, you know we're, we're here. Get, right, well, I mean, you can you can take your time getting up off of somebody, and and the clock is running. Mm -hmm. you know, here it's five minutes of fighting time. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it's a big difference. Pro two, we don't know if Pro Two is going to be around. I mean, this was just a demonstration. Yeah, they're planning another one in six to eight months, but we're not sure if it's going to be around. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, ho hopefully we'll get more television coverage uh, at our uh, U.S. International, which is October 22nd to 23rd, and our trials will be on ESPN2, and I think they're going to start televising some European competitions, like the French Open and the German Open and mm -hmm. the Kano Cup in Japan, so hopefully you'll see a lot more of it on ESPN and ESPN2. Right, and probably some of the fighters we saw here will be in Absolutely. You'll, some you'll of those. You'll definitely see Brian, you'll see Jimmy, you'll see Colleen, you'll see Sandy. You'll see uh, Lilico and Salida. Yeah, as you can see, it's really exciting. Yes, oh, really absolutely. exciting. And you see what type of athlete you have to be to mm -hmm. do judo. It's, it's a real, uh, it's a tough sport. It's tough physically and it's tough conditioning-wise too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it combines power and condition with technique. Mm -hmm. And when you see the arm locks and you see the throws, it's, it's really beautiful. It is. It is. It was a great show. Uh, we're happy that that we could bring it out to you, and. Uh, you know, if anybody once again wants to get a hold of, of you guys, they can uh, look you up in the phone book out of Buffalo Grove, and the name of the school would be? It's Cones Judo Club. It's 302 McHenry Road. Uh, phone number is 847-459-5366. We're there five, five nights a week and on Saturdays. We have, uh, we have seniors training for the Olympics. We have juniors training for the Junior Olympics. And we have beginners. We start on the floor. Great. So no age, really. Four years old. You no age. Going, huh? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of right. fun. That's that's great. That's great. So anybody interested, please give them a call. And you know what? We'd like to thank you for tuning in again to Alan Ross's Saturday Night Fighting. And I'm Steve Shemansky. We had the Cohen brothers, Steve and Erwin. We'd like to thank you and catch us next time. And we'll be back. <laughs>